Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase. Got a very special show here today. First, I want to introduce my co-host here. Joining us, Mr. Kevin White. Hello, How you doing, Tim. Kevin? How you doing? How you doing, man? Doing great. We bro. got a lot to talk about, man. We got a lot of shows and we've been covering things. So a lot of good things happen in this world of R&B and soul music, right? It's going to be fun. And joining us is yes. our guest co-host, frequent co-host of the R&B yes. Showcase, and he's been in many of the stations in Philadelphia. He's yes. a former program director at WOGL FM in Philadelphia and WPGR with Jerry Blavitt, Gita Gold Radio. You worked or, or actually oh. Philly Gold Radio. Yes, I did. PGR. Many, yes. many years. Yes. In fact, and, I'm uh, going to be there for the tribute uh, as a tribute next Saturday night down in Ma uh, Margate. All nice. right. Well, we got Tommy it's great McCarthy. To be here. Tommy McCarthy is with us here today as co-host. And of course, of course, um, you're truly Tim Marshall, Kyle Max joining us as well. What up? And uh, thank you, Kyle, for being here. And uh, we're, we're excited about having this gentleman uh, joining us, uh, our special guest here today from one of the greatest groups in American rock and roll and doo-wop history. He's a founding member of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, and he's got a brand new book out called A Teenager's Dream. It is our honor to welcome to the show the legendary Mr. Jimmy Merchant. Yes. Give him a round of applause, yes. Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, folks. All of you out there, thank you so, so very much. How you doing, I Jimmy? How you feeling, man? Put, um, um, I, I, I can't even express the words. Um, <laughs> my publisher, you spoke with her. Mm -hmm. She said, she said, she said, Daddy Jimmy, just make sure you are who you are and uh, who I am, I, I am uh, a combination of, you know, uh, a gentleman that has a superstardom history that, that, uh, uh, that I'm glued to. And over the period of years, the glue has been released and, mm -hmm. and connected to the guy upstairs. Mm -hmm. God himself, he said, take that glue off that history. I gave it to you and you could still be yourself, the historian guy in music, but remember, I'm the one that put you there. Mm. So I feel blessed that uh, after coming to grips with this great history of mine, the whole picture, the whole picture, kids, um, the idea of a dream that stemmed from uh, basically musical gifts, because the musical gifts is like any other person in the world with special gifts that take them into the field that they're really to be headed in when a dream comes into the picture, whether it's a doctor or law, a, a lawyer. And in my case, it was music. So um, it took me a while to come to grips with that because I was all up on the fact that I could sing. I knew how to hear music. I got so cool at it. I knew how to arrange parts because I watched my father at five years old when he came in from the army one day. I said, first time I seen him at five, he hugged my two sisters and he said, Hey son, you know, you look, you look pretty cool. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take my army, army uniform off and I got some records to play. And we followed him in the living room and he put on Count Basie and wow. all these jazz cats. Mm -hmm. And he started doing the sand on the floor. <laughs> I don't know if you all remember that little dance called the sand and smoking a camel cigarette <laughs> and, 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 and scatting mm -hmm. and scanning. That's it. <laughs> you know, and then grabbing, grabbing his lovely wife, my dear darling mother, and pulled her in the living room. She, she, she said, oh, Sammy, you want me to dance in front of the children? He said, come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw all that stuff, you know? <laughs> you know, cause I remember, you know, we came out with a song with Frankie Lott, come on, baby, let's go downtown. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, this stuff, this stuff is what I'm really all about. Mm -hmm. And of course I went through the whole period of Fame and not really looking at the intricacies of the business area, except seeing that something was wrong. And then we turned 21 mm. and we saw that, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how we turned 21 and the group, they, they sent us our trust funds. It was $6,000 for mm. five guys mm. in 
when we turned 21, 1961, I said, well, oh, 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 hold it. <laughs> and we were already in the street, mm. you know, because because uh, 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 Frankie was separated from us when in 57. So 56 January to mid 57, it's a year and a half. Mm-hmm. We was 17. Frankie mm-hmm. was 14. Mm-hmm. And we was already jumping in the street because we didn't have guidance. We didn't have care. And it what was what was going on. Drugs, sex, and rock and roll, whatever you want. All three, if you want. And with us, it was both, all three, drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And we were still trying to make it with other singers after Frankie, mm-hmm. up until 21, where we turned 21 as four boys, and it could go no further because now we were lost in the street. Mm-hmm. So especially when we got that little bit amount of money, and I was mm-hmm. already married. The girl that I met, I met her in 50, we were on the road, and she was a friend of my sister. My sister phoned me while we were doing uh, a, a TV show in California, and they put her on. Uh, uh, my sister put her on the phone. I said, "Oh, I can't wait to meet you when I get back home." She was twelve years old, <laughs> and her name, you know. And I ended up marrying her. I had to marry her because I impregnated her. Mm-hmm. And but when I got home, I wanted. To, to see what she had to say. I said, can you take a shower with me? My sisters and my mother said, what's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all this crazy stuff. Take us back so, to me now. This was a short period um, yeah. that you actually were together. It seems like a lot longer with all this great music that you have. Yeah. But take us through yeah. the, to the beginning of the formation of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. How did you guys come together as a group? That's, that's the, um, the key question. Um, my mom leaves dad I'm 14 I said mommy what you doing mom I'm leaving your father I said mom I'm getting ready I, I got a vocal group and, and I'm going into the ninth grade Key, the ninth grade she says I know where you're going but I'm leaving dad. We're going over to your grandmother's until we find an apartment. So the first day in my new school, stick junior high, going the first going uh the first day of the ninth grade, uh, the teacher sits me over by the last row next to the window, and it's about thirty five kids in there. They say, Say hi to the new boy James. Hi, James. I said, how y'all? How y'all doing? I sat there. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I hadn't forgot the fact that, you know, um, um, there were girls already, boys chasing girls. I remember, it was no teenagers. It was no singing. But the attraction for girls. So it was, it was about 20, 35 kids, and about 25 of them were girls. 35 kids and about 25 were girls. Okay. So the teacher says, okay, everybody, we got, we got, there's one, there's one person missing. And, and, and as soon as she said that and the bell rang, this tall dude walks in. It's Sherman Garns. Okay. okay. I don't know. He's going to be the base. Uh-huh. All I know is she said, Hey teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Mr. Garns, Mr. Sherman Garns, you know, you're in the ninth grade and everybody's aware of you from the seventh and eighth. And of course me. And furthermore, you live directly across the street. And I'm going to sit you next to this new boy in the class named James, the last window. And in fact, Sherman Garns, you can look into your kitchen and your living room from your window. (laughs) You're not going to be late every day in this class like you have been in the eighth and the seventh grade. Mm. He goes, hey, teacher, okay. And don't call me teacher. <laughs> call me Mrs. Smoller. Okay, Miss Smoller. And I picked up that voice. Mm-hmm. That's base. the only thing I was into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, everything else. I mean, every every everybody in the class was, um, you know, dressing. But this tall kid, he looked like a white boy because he had freckles. <laughs> the only difference was he had a big haircut, and that's the first time I saw an afro. You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you look at Sherman carefully, he, you know, he had white boy features, mm-hmm. but, but, um, 
he dressed like Tom Sawyer, sneaking jeans and a T-shirt because he was a basketball player. He was 6'4". Wow. I six, three, six, okay. four. Right. So he sits over to the to the, the last row next to the window and the teacher says, okay, children, you didn't say hi to Sherman. You all know him. Stand up, Sherman. He stands and said, hey, how you all doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the girl said, hi, Sherman. Oh, wow. I, said, oh. <laughs> I mean, all this stuff, you know. You got your base. So, yeah, I said, I said, um, first chance I got, the teacher was getting ready to prepare to do some work. I said, yo, man, I'm looking at the teacher, looking at him. I whispered to him, I said, can you sing? He looks at me and he said, can you play basketball? <laughs> and that's how it started. Okay. That's how our, that's how our friendship started. Mm-hmm. And moving quickly forward, we got involved. I mean, do, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, Earth Angels just came out. Mm-hmm. The Penguins, right? Earth mm-hmm. Angels. And yeah, and remember, um, um, Earth Angel, Earth Angel, will you be mine, mm-hmm. my darling dear? Love you all the time. I'm just a fool. A fool in love with you. Sounds familiar? Yeah, it does. In love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Every the kids were everybody was attached to this Earth Angel, and mm-hmm. then of course the moon. At the, uh, it was a good one. The uh, uh, life could be a dream. Mm-hmm. The chords earlier that year in '54. Yeah, and I was trying to show Sherman stuff, and we we got involved with three other boys in the ninth grade, and we were singing in the park directly across the street from the school. The school building is still there. The park is still there. Sherman's building is still there across the street from the park uh, 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 on 163rd between Edgecombe and Amsterdam. And, um, and when that didn't work, Sherman told me as we were getting out of 1954, he had gotten close to Joe Negroni and Herman Santiago. Herman, okay. Herman lived in the block. Mm-hmm. Sherman lived on the corner of Edgecombe and 165th, Herman lived on 165th between Edgecombe and Amsterdam, and Frankie Lyman lived directly across the street from Herman, the building next to Stick, the school. Okay, Everything was in place when I arrived. I was the missing link, apparently, <laughs> because the four boys was in that school that was going to become Frankie Lyman and the teenagers. I was the missing link, and I was saying all along, I was glad to be here. I I never had this whole thought about being a missing link because Sherman and Herman and Joe were, were, were friends, and Frankie watched us because he was doing his own thing because he was still talented and, and very fresh in terms of his attitude. But while he was young, he was, he seen, you know, he, he copied adults mm-hmm. and he worked in the corner store mm. on the weekends that Sherman's parent went to to, sh- to shop for small items. And then Richard Barrett moved into the block. Okay. Mm. In Thank the you. summer, after we graduate, after the four of us graduate from junior high, from the ninth grade. Okay. Now Herman, Joe Negroni, Herman Santiago, Joe Negroni, and myself and Sherman we had formed a group because Sherman talked me into singing with Joe Negroni. Of course, he had to talk me after the whole thing. I said, man, what does Puerto Ricans know about blow harmony? We didn't call it, I didn't call it do up I said, what do you Spanish cats know how to do blow harmony? <laughs> Sherman goes, man, you know, uh, you know, uh, you can show them. You can show. I said, I ain't got no time to show people how to sing. I need people that got it already, man. <laughs> he said, sure. He said, Jimmy, man, just be a little patient. I said, I mean, and, and Herman Herman plays baseball. You play basketball. The only guy that's into this, you tell me, is this guy, Joe Negroni. He said, well, let me introduce you to him first. I meet Joe, and we start talking. And, of course, um, uh, we graduate in June. We're singing, we, we, you know, 
we, we form, Joe talked me into it and we get together, the four of us. And I start teaching, I start teaching these guys how to figure out their parts, mm -hmm. baritone, um, uh, bass is Sherman. Uh, first tenor is Herman. Herman had a high voice. I mm -hmm. said, you're a first tenor. And he had an ear. And Joe Negroni had an ear. And I said, you're a baritone. Mm -hmm. But Herman, you got to sing second tenor because I want you to sing lead. You've got the lead voice in the group. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a first tenor. I can sing all the parts, but I'm also a first tenor. So I became basically the first tenor when Frankie comes in, uh, we, we formed, we formed around February, 1955. Frankie Lyman comes into the group in August, 1955, when already we had three songs. I want you to be my girl. Why the blues fall in love and please be mine. And let me say that in another way. Okay. When the four of us were together, we started singing once again around February 1955. We had to deal with making sure we graduate. So we sang after school in the park. The kids were chasing and you know, the kids were watching us, the four of us. And we were singing, you know, Earth Angel and That's What You're Doing to Me and these songs. And um, Herman was singing the lead. And Sherman Garns, Sherman, Sherman, had a buddy in the building where he lived who was a big brother, he said, Sherman, I see that the first group that you had with this new guy that you're friends with, Jimmy Merchant, didn't work, but now you're with two Spanish guys and you guys are making more sense. I got some letters that I want to give you and I want you to take those letters and turn them into songs. And Sherman said, well, we need your letters for it. He said, well, you need original material. He said, well, well if it, when you get the letters from me, he says, well, I got them from someone that wanted for me to get uh, a copyrighted for them in some way or to, or, or to show people. Uh, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about these love letters are uh, the one page love notes, about 14, 15 of them. And they basically a woman in love with somebody. And she used the same words, or why do birds sing so gay? And lovers await the break of day. And why do fools fall in love? And Earth Angel was big at that time. And people were copying that. So we came up with um, taking seriously when Sherman, when Herman said, Herman said, I want those love letters. And Sherman said, well, what, what, well, why do you want those love letters? He said, because I'm, I'm the one that told Joe Negroni to bring you and Jimmy into the group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Sherman said, well, oh, 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 good man. So when did, you, when, did you just, when did you decide to come up with the youth sound with Frankie, though? Like, it was just you four, you said. Did, were you, did, oh, you, yes. did you record anything before Frankie? Uh, no. You just, okay. Not at all. That's a good point. Um, uh, there was a lady that wanted to record us, but then Frankie in August comes into the group after we had already did a couple of talent shows. Mm -hmm. Frankie did a talent show with us, with his group. So as far as those letters were concerned, um, Herman is, is, is key. But he just basically, he was the, one of the guys, uh, he was, him and Joe's the one that started the group and got me and Sherman okay. interested. Mm -hmm. And old Joe Negroni said to him in the hallway that day, and Sherman said, he said, Herman, Herman, you're the one that started the group, but I'm the one that told you to, that, to get those two guys, mm -hmm. Sherman and Jimmy. Okay. So they're two Spanish guys, right? Mm -hmm. So he said, he said, not only that, Herman, uh, Jimmy is the guy that showed us how to sing harmony. He showed us how to, how to, uh, 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 you know, copy other groups on the radio. Mm -hmm. Let him take these letters and see what he does with them. And Sherman said, "And by the way, Herman, the letters was given to me, <laughs> and I agree with Joe." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, 
I'm not putting Jimmy mm-hmm. Merson as the man, but that's just how things go mm-hmm. with, with boys. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they, you know, and Joe was smart. Joe Negroni, his buddy, he said, no, let Jimmy take him, Herman, because Jimmy is the one helping us with songs. And so um, I turned one of those letters into a slow song called Why the Birds Sing So Gay. Okay. And I came up with I Want You to Be My Girl mm. and Please Be Mine. All great those songs. Two, yeah. Those three songs. Mm-hmm. And Frankie came into the group in August, um, the same time that Richie Barrett um, uh, of the Valentines moved into that corner mm-hmm. store where Frankie worked, where Frankie, where Herman's mother used, and Sherman's mother used, I mean, Sherman's parents used for weekend. And um, uh, Barrett, uh, 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 he stored at Frankie and um, uh, Frankie was just singing in the background. I, I placed him in the background because me and Joe looked at each other and we talked. She, what about this boy? You know, he's a, he's a fabulous lead singer. And Joe said, "Man, he he looks like he's too fresh." I said, "What do you mean by that?" He said, "Well, he's 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 big headed for his age." And I said, "Yeah, but he can sing." He said, "Well, let's do, let's just let's just see." Let's let Herman keep singing lead mm-hmm. and keep Frankie in the first ten. Mm. So Frankie's in the group, the Ermans, we call ourselves. And um um and Richard Barrett comes in and he sees it all, but he says that because there's two Puerto Ricans in the group, George Golden was married to a a, a, a G Records and married to a, a, a Spanish lady. And he was he was involved with uh, 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 Spanish recordings. There was a Spanish big record company out there making mambo records, and everybody was going down to the Palladium downtown on Broadway to dance. And Richard Barrett took and, and prepared us to go downtown. He he said, "Don't worry about the originals. Just right now, just sing something that you that you know well." And we went down there, George Golden. We we, we, we auditioned in George Goldman's office mm-hmm. at 220 West 42nd Street. Mm-hmm. And after Herman sang, we sang those those basic songs, Earth Angel, and That's What You're Doing to Me. Uh, and George said, yo, yo, okay, now, who are you, little kid? And Frankie stepped out from behind Herman and said, you talking about me, right? He said, yeah, what do you do? He says, whatever you want me to do. He said, okay, George, so let me hear you sing something. And so uh, he sang the song, I believe, that we sang at the Apollo Amateur Night uh, with Frankie. And the only reason why we didn't win that night on the Wednesday night amateur night at the Apollo Theater, because they gave it to a gentleman who was crippled, who sang in a wheelchair. Okay. But they gave it to him. Mm-hmm. So Frankie told George Goldman, uh, what do you want? He said, he said, he looked at Richard, George Goldman. This was key, that moment in time, at the, uh, around September of 1955. He looked at it, he said, Richard Barrett, help these boys and keep this little kid Frankie as their lead singer. He said, he's got it. He's got it. He said, then he looked at us, he said, boys, I'm not trying to mess up anything in the group. I'm looking for a hit record. I'm a hit record maker. And I see this small young kid. He's, he said, by the way, how old are you? He was, he, he, we told him, he, we told him it, our ages, um, you know, 15 and Frankie, 15 and 16 and Frankie was 12. Okay. And he said, he's your new lead son. Come back in a couple of weeks. I'm going to record you. Hmm. And so, um, the question came I showed him the slow song that I had came up with, Why the Bird Sings So Gay. I mm-hmm. wanted my girl, please be mine. Mm-hmm. And we turned, and, and Richard Barrett was working along with us, and we turned, um, uh, that's what you come up, uh, Why the Bird Sings So Gay mm-hmm. into Why the Fools mm-hmm. Fall in Love into a fast song. Okay. And we, and we went down, and George recorded us the first week of December 1955. And it was released at the end of the year and January 1st, kids were singing it in, in school. When we mm. went to school, the first day I went back to, uh, when you, you, kids go back to school in January. 
the oh, first wow. day, uh, we were in George Washington High School. Mm-hmm. The four of us and Frankie were still in junior high in the eighth grade. And there was a kid, a girl, wide skirt, buck shoes, singing, tell me why. I said, oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. I said, I said, hey, come to serve me. Tell me why. She, she didn't want to be the star. She was singing, tell me why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, I said, we're going to the same class. We're going to account. What do you want to know? I said, when'd you get that? I heard on the radio. I heard on the radio. I said, who are they? Uh, what did she say? They, they, she said, they called, they called us the, she, she said, there are five girls singing a teenager song. <laughs> she thought we were five oh, girls. Gosh. And that was the beginning of it. Mm. That He's was got that great the voice, though. Beginning. So now you, what studio were you using? What's the name of the studio that you used? You remember? Um, this, record the songs. Oh, uh, uh, gosh. I got it all written down and everything. I don't feel like going to paper. I hear you. Uh, books and stuff. Because I got a bookcase here, by the way. Um, I'm looking at it. Um, they're all dated uh, from 1955 to 2000. 21. Wow. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40 books, 40 mm. leasing, wow. 40 lease, 40, um, loose leaf books mm-hmm. and, uh, six photograph album books. Okay. It's all there. So I always tell my wife and my daughter, um, if anything happens to me, mm-hmm. the stuff is there. It's right there. Mm-hmm. So that question that you asked, um, um, Nola, was it Nola? Okay. I, I think it was Nola Stewie. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, no, no, that wasn't it. But that's where they made all the hits mm-hmm. down on something like 46 between, I think it was 46 between New York, yeah. uh, eight and Broadway. Downtown. Okay. Okay. So what was the recording process oh, no. like for you guys? I, it just came to me. Bell Sound Studio. Bell? That's it. Bell, Bell Sound, Sound Studio. Studio in New York. Mm-hmm. What was the recording process like for you making that record? Why do fools fall in love? I mean, were you all in there together with the musicians in the studio? How was it done? Well, uh, the, the difficult part was that when they had us come down, uh, the, uh, I think they, they had us come down uh, on a on a Friday. Um, and it went into midnight simply because they were recording, um, two or three groups before us on G records. And then we came in. Okay. So it was late at night and we started somewhere recording somewhere around 11 PM and, uh, it was Friday. And, and and Frankie was mad and upset. He said, Mr. Goldman, you had us coming in Friday. We, we were in school all day long. And you used, you brought us in last. And we had about eight or nine takes. And each one was cut. We haven't went through the whole song yet. What the heck is going on? That's Frankie. Mm-hmm. Mr. Goldman <laughs> said, hold up, hold up, hold up. Frankie, little boy, listen. I cut then before the song is finished because I don't want to waste your voice. And, well, we're hungry. How about some Frank with it? Then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, Frankie was a fresh kid. Mm-hmm. So, um, long story made short, they got, uh, uh, they sent out for hamburgers to, I think, a Nedix, uh, uh, Frankfurter, uh, and, and Frankfurter's a hamburger store, uh, and Times Square, um, at that um that that recording studio of 46th street and barrett went into the office and talked more with george goldman and then we they came back out and they worked more on it they finally said that they wanted a catchy something catchy in the song and barrett looked at me and said um you need a catchy part of the song and I, I forget the, I forget the slang what they call it it'll come to me because it's in the book 
Um, what that the hook, the hook, and, the hook of the song, the hook, the hook of the song, the hook, right? Oh, hook, hook. Hook. yeah, that's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so Frankie said, "Explain what a hook is." So Joe Negroni said, "Joe knew all this stuff." He said, "A hook is something that uh, that, that that comes into the song in the middle of the verse, and it it attracts the the attention of the listener." And Frankie said, "Okay, I got it." And what George says, I want it for Jimmy to, to speed up the song from a slow song to a fast song. And Jimmy did a good job. So he basically said to sing the song twice. And we put a sax solo between the song singing song twice. So why the first solo was repeated two times and in the middle was a sax solo. And that made the song short, um, uh, shorter. And um, the hook Frankie came up with was, tell me why, <laughs> while we were saying, why do you fall in love? Tell me why. He took, he removed the words from the second verse and put that, that hook in it, that tell me why hook. And that's how, that song came about. Okay. All right. So how many songs did you record? You just recorded that song in that session. How about the other songs? When were they recorded? Because uh, I know, we, I know we, know we got a whole bunch of albums here by, um, I, Tommy's got a whole bunch of albums here. Show him the albums, I Tommy. Do. He's got well, a whole of course, collection of, take a look at these albums. Of course you um, know this one. Jimmy, oh, wow. Uh, of course, of, this is the legendary this, original this, this one. 12, mm-hmm. 12 songs exactly. in that album. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute. See if you remember this one. My, my uh, friend Jerry Blavitt, the Geeter, which I know you know here from Philadelphia. The Geeter, the Heater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you remember when he put this album out? Jerry Blavitt. Uh, Can you read that? L- l- lift it up a little higher. Oh, How's that? Oh, that's him dancing, right? That's him. Mm-hmm. He's getting into a helicopter. Back in those oh, days, yes, he yes. had so many record hops going it, on. It, it, look, it looks He familiar. took helicopter. He would have two or three record hops in one night. Yeah. And he uh, yeah. had a helicopter, took him from record yeah. hop to record hop. But this was Jerry, his, Jerry Blavitt was. Yeah, but this okay. was his, his, <laughs> first, his first album. In fact, if you notice, the Geeter is misspelt on this because he spelled it G E A T O R through mm. his career. Oh, but this one has yeah. it as G E E T E R. Mm. So that's how early this this came out in 62. He put this yeah, out in and, 1962. And he, and he passed away, I think, last year. He, right? he, he passed mm-hmm. away in January. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. This in January. year. Yes, this year, January. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm going to yeah. uh, participate in a tribute to him uh, this Saturday night at his nightclub down in, in Margate. They're calling it the Last Dance, and they invited some uh, disc jockeys like myself who uh, worked. I worked with Jerry uh, for ten years on the radio, but knew him yeah. since '62. And um, how about this one? This is from. Can you see this? Yes. All right. Now that's oh wow. Now that's from this album. Um, that was put out in in eighty six. It's five. Whoa. It's a five LP set. But there you guys are live on stage, and it's a five Phenomenal. LP set of all your music, all Phenomenal. your recorded music, plus some live live stuff. And what the funny thing they did was, it's a five LP set, and every one, yes. every one of the records they put on a different George Goldner label like this one's the uh yes. the end one. label this oh, one's on, end. this one's on end and then they've got yes. one on rama they've got rama one on rama and rama g gone those yeah. are four labels of mm-hmm. there's rama see the rama one mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i'll do this as quick as i can here's here comes the gone the gone label I'll turn it on uh-huh. right for you the gone label pretty cool yes. right mm. and then they did uh, even though you guys were on the um your originals, of course, were on this label. Let me get this out of here. The G record label. Mm-hmm. That that was the one. That was mm-hmm. your original one. Mm-hmm. And then they did That's the original one. Then they did one more, which is some of your live recordings on the uh, later Roulette record label. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, uh, yeah, Roulette, Morris Levy. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Morris Levy. Right now, <laughs> yeah. now when when you talk about um the different producers and all of that. Um, how did you first get find a producer? Was it George Goldner or was it, who was it? Who was your first producer? Well, George Goldner was the man, right? But Richard he, Barrett he, was he your manager? Uh, Richard Barrett was an acting 
road manager because that day when he sent when when Goldner um said to us Saturday after we recorded it was after twenty six takes. Why the fools fall in love was the twenty sixth take. Wow. He's gonna put us in a cab and send us home and before we leave the building to put to put us into a checker cab. He asked, he said, gentlemen, before you guys go, tell me, who wrote Why the Fools Fall in Love? And the five of us looked at each other and I spoke up after the five of us looked at each other and I said three words. We all did, Mr. Golden. We all, all, he did. He said, oh, that's cool. All of you guys will get royalties. Then he threw the same. But mm. I need two names. So we looked at each other again. Joe Negroni said, why, Mr. Goldman? He said, because the label is going to be too small for five names. Underneath the long writing of the name of your record, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? So five names is too much. I will give you five gentlemen what you deserve. All five of you, as Jimmy said, wrote it. He said all. So all five of you guys will go down as writers legitimately and legally as writers of the song. What about Please Be Mine, as you were supposed to and they said, well, Jimmy is the one that came up with that song himself. Okay, well, cool. Jimmy goes down at the, as the writer, please be not. But <laughs> I need two names. I need two out the five. Oh, you all will get credit, but I need two names. We looked at each other. This all took place in just basically a couple of minutes. Mm, interesting. That's right. It wasn't a long drawn out thing. Mm -hmm. And we looked at each other again. Herman Santiago. I love you, sir. I love you, Herman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, Santiago and I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Why not? Tim. Tim. Mm. Santiago and mm -hmm. Me and Sherman and Joe looked at each other. We didn't say nothing much, but we were satisfied with the fact that George Golden had told us that all five names were going to go down. But mm -hmm. Herman Santiago said, when he asked for two names, he said Santiago and Lyman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man. <laughs> so uh, we didn't say nothing. Herman's name went down under Why the Fools Fall in Love. It went, it, 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 it was Lyman, Santiago, and Goldner. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Mm. Brother Tim, that, mm. there, that there you go is the key to the whole story. I understand. Now, a lot of that's in your book now, right? Your your new book called A Teenager's Dream. Oh, buddy. These early it years. It is there. Mm. It is there. <laughs> and your story has been very influential. As, as coming it, it of, there, is, there's, right? you got the book there. right there. <laughs> that's, the hard that's the hard copy, right? This the hard is the hard cover, yeah. Right. Also available in softback. And, and, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Wow. A lot of information there, brother. <laughs> it's, and it's only 300 and come. Uh, right. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking mm -hmm. Some good Picture? pictures, too. Huh? Very 20 nice. pictures. Yes. Nice. Very nice. Is that Ed Sullivan? Jane Russell. 
Oh, Gene Russell. Okay. Russell. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh-huh. Here she go. We're two of the teenagers. That's mm-hmm. with Jack Barr. The other mm-hmm. one's Jack Barr. Jack Jane, Barr. Yeah, yeah. Jane Russell with yes. Frankie, Herman, and Joe. Yeah. Okay. And Frankie Someone Lane. Room. You're on the Frankie Lane show. You're on Ed Sullivan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a drawing of my first wife okay. uh, that I did. And it's my mother. You did drawings? Right. You did the drawings, huh? Very nice. I'm an artist. You're an artist. All uh, right. I'm an artist, too. Mm-hmm. And there's the lady that I'm with today. God oh, bless her. She's mm-hmm. in the bedroom watching television. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the mother of the daughter that helped me put this mm-hmm. uh, scenario together. Okay. Now you said and, this, this uh, book is the first is the first installment of your books, right? You say you're working on another it, book as well. Yeah, yeah this is book one, mm-hmm. and this is uh, 223 pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 um, um, gosh, <laughs> uh, a gentleman I'm close with um, read the book in two days. Well, okay. And another gentleman said, the book is candid. Mm-hmm. And my wife had to tell me what the word candid means. Mm-hmm. She said, he said, she said, honey, what it means is that mm-hmm. you were straightforward mm-hmm. and all the facts, the ups and downs mm-hmm. are there. And, and, and I had to be, I had to be very careful, like with that scenario when Herman put uh, you know, Lyman and Cynthia, Herman didn't mean no harm. Mm-hmm. He didn't mean no harm. I mean, mm-hmm. he's the guy with Joe Negroni that started to do, he didn't mean no harm when he said Cynthia, I'll go Lyman at all. Well, the guy did ask for two names, right? He said two names. Uh, they just, yeah, just, just two, two names. Two names so, you know, for whatever so, I mean, reason you know, he had for doing that, you know, for whatever reason he had for doing that, that's what he asked for, so. Yes. You know. So, um, mm-hmm. um, the, Recording the going on the road, mm. working with big people. They called us the rage of the age in mm. England when our record went to number one in London on the first time they had a, a black artist on number one in London, England, number mm. one on the chart. They called us the rage of the age and asked, um, you know, uh, you know, Rich, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Golden became our manager. Mm. With Joe Kosky and Richard Barrett basically was just working with Golden, mm-hmm. helping Golden bring other artists in to the company. But George Golden was primarily our, um, uh, he was our manager, not primarily, we had a manager's contract. And um, the, the sad part about it was Golden's name was on uh, you know, why the fools fall in love, and then uh, and, and on the other side, please be mine mm-hmm. with my with my name. The second one, Barrett Barrett's name was on. I want you to be my girl with Golda. This is some of the evil stuff in this world that we're in. Um, primarily untrue. That comes into the picture through nice people because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for Richard Barrett, we wouldn't be the star. I wouldn't be talking to you today. Mm-hmm. Richard Barrett is the one that Put brought us down. Mm-hmm. The big but is then why, mm-hmm. brother? Why? Why did you not tell our parents mm-hmm. that we need it a we needed an attorney that dealt with royalties mm-hmm. because we never got paid wow. for the music that we sang for them that we had before we were discovered. Mm-hmm. Barrett, poor guy. Mm-hmm. He discovered the you know Anthony and Imperials and he did a mm-hmm. lot of the, the, the three degrees. Yeah, yeah. yeah did the yeah, Chantels. Yeah, the Chantels yeah. And the three degrees, mm-hmm. they yeah, worked three with degrees. the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I knew Richard uh, from working in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I was yeah, actually Richard, was at his, I mean, his everybody funeral, knows but, Richard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was very so, instrumental so in I just so much make of this that music. Plain. I just want to make this plain. Mm-hmm. I'm 83. I had never received an award for you, brother. Wow. 
I can understand. No, 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 like no. That. Yeah, it's, is, is, is that making any sense to you, gentlemen? No, no none at all. all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Not at all. all those wonderful, beautiful recordings you guys okay. did over the years. Kevin, you had a question for, for yeah. Jimmy? Yeah, I want to uh, kind of move a little bit forward into the story. Um, okay. I'm, I listen to a lot of music, and I'm also a very big fan of usually groups after they transition a little bit you know, in the sense that I want to talk a little bit about the teenagers post Frankie. Um, tell me a little bit about um, Billy Lebrano, who was the first Bill, replacement. Billy? Frankie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, Billy. I love that guy, man. Um, when, um, hmm. when Frankie was removed, from us while in England, the very place, the very people that called us, you know, um, the rage of the age. And, 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 and I, I spoke, uh, I can't really, you know, to find it. I spoke with somebody in England and what they pointed out to me you, know, you can see here one of my books here, tons of materials here. Right here. Tons of material here. Oh. <laughs> this is just one of the books. What is mm. that? You got lots of notes there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, yeah, you got lots of notes. Yes, you do. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to find this one here uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, with, with the kids. Is it here or <laughs> I was trying to look up the uh, the kid groups because uh, Billy okay. Lebron okay. was the guy. And here we go. Look at this thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. The students, the schoolboys, okay. the yeah. teen corps. Yeah, you go. heard of those guys? Yes. The young tones. Yes. yes. The noble tones. Mm-hmm. The, the the chanters. The mistakes. Mm. The youngsters. The collisions. The desires. The bop chords. The pretenders, the teen kings, the heartbreakers, Jimmy Castor and the juniors, uh-huh. Danny and the juniors, mm-hmm. Tiny Tim and the hits. Now remember, Jimmy Castor wrote "I Promise to Remember" for us. Mm-hmm. Danny and the juniors, we went on tour with. Uh, there was on. There was out there with us. Tiny Tim and the hits. Tiny Tim became our singer. Right. Little little Jimmy in the top, Ronnie in the highlights. Little, J- we started all these. Little Anthony mm. and the Imperials, of course. Little Butchie Saunders mm. and the L Fords, okay. Patty Labelle, yeah. Pearl McKinnon, yes. who sang with us, the Chantels, and then came the Jacksons, mm-hmm. the Osmonds, okay, the Silvers, mm-hmm. the New Edition, mm-hmm. Boys to Men, who they asked me to record <laughs> with them. Yeah. Boys to Men, you re- you recorded uh, yeah. with Boys to Men. You did. You have a, a Why Do Fools Fall in Love featuring Jimmy Merchant. Yeah. On this album. Yeah. Yeah. And sync. And look, look, I'm moving right to the day. All right. Destiny's Child. Mm-hmm. Beyond say. We started this whole movement. Yes, you did. New kids on the block. Yep. Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. New Direction Prince Justin Bieber. Mm-hmm. And guess who? Bruno Mars. Okay. Who sang yeah. Why the Fools Fall in Love with his Puerto Rican father when he was a little boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. He sure did. So you started that's the rage of the age that England was talking about the youth movement. So this is this is the thing. This is the thing that this world got to come to grips with is how you're going to have a lot of stuff. You don't have nothing in terms of the music that started it all. The fifties, the fifties music. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my key complaints. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a man of God today, I'm a minister. Mm -hmm. All of you know that. And God is the one that put me in this position. He put me in this position to let people know to stick with your dream because your dream stems from the gift from me. That's God talking. Your dream comes from me because I gave you the gift to be able to do what you wanted that you turned into a dream. Mm -hmm. But now I want you to take that dream and let everybody know that I'm the one. Mm -hmm. That's what a dream is. Okay. So now what I'm looking at is, okay, part of the dream is, how come the musical world is sleeping on the beginners of this music, not to give Frankie Lyman and the teenagers 
the credit because we started the youth movement in Absolutely. music period. That's that young sound. You would you started that right. sound. You that know, high tenor we're all sound. the kids. Yeah. So I just gave you t- uh, uh, should, a, yeah. a few of the groups. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this is this is this is probably Herman. I'm sorry, Joe Negroni, Sherman, and Herman are looking at me from head in. Mm-hmm. Because they were all born again when they died. Mm-hmm. Joe, Herman, I'm sorry, not Herman, Herman's still around. Mm-hmm. Herman's still alive. Mm-hmm. Joe, uh, Frankie, and Sherman are saying, yeah, man, let the world know. Let the world know the truth. Mm-hmm. That it's not so much of the teenagers, but what happened with the music that occurred in the time that we started copying it? Mm-hmm. The harp tones, mm-hmm. these people, those guys, the moon glow. I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, every time I watch a, a large scale something on television that represents black music, we don't see the stuff that occurred in 19, from 1952, probably, and even before that, because there's some dynamite groups there. You see it in my book, the, 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 the people that I, that I was listening to when I was in my, before, you know, when I turned uh, eight, nine, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. So to bring joy back though, it, it was when we needed a new lead singer and we came off to, you know, uh, we were looking for somebody. I went, uh, I lived in, my mother had relocated to Jamaica, Queens, and I knew a girl by the name of Rose that sang with two other girls. She was another copy group of kids. And uh, she told me she knew of a gentleman that by the name of Billy from Forest Hills High School that she went to school with and she brought him to me and uh, I auditioned him. He had an ear. He could sing. The big deal was that he wasn't a Frankie Lyman type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the big problem. And when I discussed it with Herman and Joe Negroni and Sherman, Joe said, well, we need a singer and we don't. Now, Joe was smart, but this is where he messed up. He said, the last thing that we need is another Frankie Lyman. I said, wait a minute. You know, that's the sound, Joe. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm the one that's bringing Billy LeBron on. He's going to sing while the Bruce fall in love in another key. He's not going to sound like a little boy, mm-hmm. but he's our age. And maybe we should think about maybe even getting a female. And Joe, see, see, Joe was key. And I love him, man. He was, I, I appreciate him. He had class. He knew the business. He said, Jimmy, we don't need another kid to come in and do what Frankie Lyman did. Let's keep Billy. We got, we got, we got a lot of gigs to do left. And they, they're dissipating because Frankie is now splitting all the gigs that we had. They, they're doing Frankie Lyman shows. And now we're doing teenager shows. So it's two teenager scenarios that's out there. Easy. So let's keep mm-hmm. Billy. Mm-hmm. So that's how Billy got in the group. We kept him. Mm-hmm. We recorded, uh, what's that? Flip flop? Flip flop, everything to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I'm, I'm actually moving up a little bit more. Um, you guys toured with just four, just the, just you guys for a little while, didn't you? Um, and you did yes. um, What's On Your Mind, I guess, off of the Columbia label? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the four of us? Yes. Matter of fact, yeah. Sherman did the lead on that one, didn't he? Yeah. And then we had a song with Sherman singing the draw. Right. No, no don't song, I think. be a fool. Yes. Back off, son. Yeah. Well, back off, boy, whatever. Hey, he's singing in the bass voice. <laughs> yeah. And also, a little bit earlier, you mentioned um, Jimmy Castor. And I'm a big funk fan, so I'm a big <laughs> Jimmy Castor guy. Tell me how that came about well, that you no, guys would actually look I, you know, with Jimmy Castor. Look, I, I, I made a face. I made a, a happy and then I made an ugly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength, mm-hmm. but I'm honest. Okay, please. Jimmy Castor was dynamite. 
he came in with a song that he had written with the junior. I promise to remember. Mm, that's great. And George Goldner told us, you got to, we got to go into the studio and record that song because it sound, it's a Jimmy, it's, it's a Frankie Lyman and a teenager copy group. And we said, yeah, but George, we're on the road. I'm taking you all off the road for two days. I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to bring you in. Copy that record. Copy it. And then you get back on the road. Because we did, we, we, you know, we were in the middle of doing, we did uh, three 60 one-nighter mm. tours. Oh, wow. Six mm -hmm. uh, from state to state, I'm sorry, from city to city across the country. We did three of them. Three two-month one-nighter tours. Not counting the TV shows that we had to fly to the West Coast and, 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 and the other things like the Apollo and all these other you know, that, that set of theater that I, that I showed in the beginning. So, you know, um, Jimmy Castor went to stick with us, but then they, he went he went to music and art from the eighth grade. Okay. And his buddy, Johnny Pruitt, who wrote with him, was in the ninth grade with the four of us. So Jimmy lived, Sherman lived on 165th, Frankie on 165th, uh, Herman on 65th, Jimmy Castor on 166th, a block away. So everybody's I mean, just in the same neighborhood. And Jimmy, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Jimmy and Jimmy became a, a smashing artist. Mm -hmm. a, yeah, I mean, he was cool. But then when he came back, I mean, but then when we got in, then when he came with us the same years later, he wanted to be the man. Mm. Now, this is the crazy stuff about this crazy business. Mm -hmm. How you want to come in an original group and say you're the man, dude? Mm. Come on. Nah. Come up with that nonsense. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Herman Santiago, mm -hmm. why are you going along with that? Mm. Oh, man. Well, Jimmy Carson knows. You know, I said, hey, look here, man. You and I are the owners of the group. We're the leaders. Jimmy Carson's got a big fat head on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. He's solid. But he's a big-headed dude. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Jimmy. Jimmy, what yeah. is your thoughts on the motion picture that came out, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, 1998 motion picture of, of that story? What's your thoughts on that story? The, uh, accu the accuracy with, with, of it, maybe. With, uh, and, and listen, I, I, don't, I don't mean to put anybody down. Okay. Because you know, who could be more big-headed than me? I was the man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I walked around, I thought I was, hey, look out. Mm-hmm. Messed up my first marriage? Come mm. on. I'm being honest with you folks. You read the book, you see that stuff. Okay. I messed up I messed up my marriage. I got five kids, my first wife. Mm. So um your what thoughts, was that on question the, again? On, thoughts on the movie. What do you think of the film Why the Fools Fall in Love that came out in nineteen ninety eight? The problem with that uh movie, Why the Fools Fall in Love, is they focused on um Diana Ross was she was the star and she was the key to bringing it to the big time, okay. big name. And she started doing her own thing and why did this fall in love she was attracted to, which she started singing in the project. Okay. In the project with a little girl and, 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 and the, um, the other Supreme who I was more close with me and my wife, uh, what's her name? Um, Mary, Mary Wilson. Um, Mary, mm. Mary, Mary Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I sent you uh, uh, a piece of me singing "Water Fools Fall in Love" a ballad. by myself. It's a ballad. Yeah. yeah, it's a ballad. Yeah, so I got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Mary Wilson is, is, is she's the one that, that that came up to the stage at the end of that performance, and I grabbed her hand mm -hmm. and and sort of danced my way to the end of the song with her oh, okay. as she was walking with her. Mm -hmm. You saw that part, I right? Saw that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you looked at it, but. I did. I saw the I saw the, the video clip of you singing it as a ballad and then you came and then he sped it up, I think, sped it up faster. The song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Mary Wilson mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. So um uh you know, we knew all these people. Um uh, the problem with the movie Why the Food Fall, they didn't they didn't they didn't get into the real deal with the first fifteen or twenty minutes that they spent with Frankie Lyman and the teenagers. They should have really made a claim to fame to the mark that Frankie Lyman and the teenagers made in the music business. 
because Diana Ross, I mean, come on, she's big time, mm-hmm. big time. So, you know. Um, did they consult you on the, on the, on the movie? It, 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 did they get your, con, did they consult you about making this film? No, they did not. I, I, I'm, I'm interested in doing something that I'm, I'm, I'm praying for the right individual to come forth that can put together a five piece documentary about the story. Because it can't be told in one documentary. Mm-hmm. It can't be told in a movie. Because uh, the last thing I need at 83 is to involve myself in, in, in some movie making scenario where they're going to make a, a happy, fun movie out of my life story. Mm-hmm. No way. Okay. They need to see the truth. They need to see the fact that kids got ripped off, mm-hmm. never got a penny, mm-hmm. never. Mm-hmm. And they went through hell. And they need to see the truth about what a dream is all about. Mm-hmm. The dream stems from your gift and God brings it to a dream. And then you take that dream and go back like what I'm doing right now, talking about God, what the dream thing is all about. Mm-hmm. And what's more important is that where we are in these end days is looking up to a lie. Looking up to a lie. Liars are all over the place. They're in our family, they are friends, they're in politics, they're across the world, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Liars. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make no sense for me to get upset. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're liars in our family, my own family. Mm-hmm. Well, you talk about a lot we, of this in your book though, right, Jimmy? This is a lot of this gonna be in your book? What you oh, talking this, about? This is, this is gonna sh- really show up in book two. Okay. Yeah. So you're working on the second. I don't. Want, I don't. Want to, I don't want to jump ahead. Oh, but okay. the point I want to make though mm-hmm. is yeah. that Frankie Lyman and the teenagers were, along with a lot of people, mm-hmm. taken by liars, mm-hmm. and it's important that mm-hmm. parents really, really take the grips with this story, this book. Mm-hmm. Take this book. And don't let your kids fall into what Frankie Lyman and the teenagers fell into under the hands of so-called supporters that became liars. Mm -hmm. They all were interested in hit records. Richard Barrett, George Goldner, Morris, Mr. Morris Levy. They were all interested in, in, in making hit records, but they all turned out to be dishonest. Mm -hmm. Not they, really understanding mm. because the way the world was at that time and it is today, they buy it for themselves because they, I, I got to get over before I get, before I get ripped up. But by the way, way, ho, 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 holy. God is the one. God is not caring what you go through. God wants you to keep looking up in hand because this incredible time that we're in is near the end. And the last thing that we need to be in touch with is ourselves wanting to get over because people are trying to get over on us. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a crazy story. Frankie Lyman and teenagers got t- totally taken. Mm. And I'm so glad that I'm alive. And you're, I here, laugh. you're here to tell Still. that story, though. That's, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. And you lift a legacy of great Thank music you, and Thank you, all the things we talked about and working. And Tommy, you worked with him over, over the right. years on the road, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My boy and, Tommy, and that's the thing. Yeah. You're. You're a living legend of rock and roll. Remember that. Oh, Jimmy. thank you. Yes. You are a living yes. legend. Yes. And, um, and hopefully this book mm-hmm. will help you get some of, just some mm-hmm. of the due that you really deserve. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my, daughter, just, my daughter just, uh, my daughter just hit <laughs> me something. She said, a teenager's dream, why do who's falling in yes. love? Frankie Lyman and teenagers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she knows, but I already, I already promoted the book. It's yeah. called and, A Teenager's Dream. And I showed it up on uh, we would also uh, mention that it's an international bestseller already. Right, they're, right, they're saying it's an international a bestseller. They're saying it's an international bestseller already. She said that everybody, my daughter said, remind everybody that you can go to Amazon okay. and get the yes. book. Get the my book. daughter. Yes, yes. <laughs> she even ordered one from, she ordered a hardcover herself. Well, I got mine got on the way. Hardcover. I'm definitely getting one. I got mine on the way, man. Hey, forward. Tim. Yes, sir. Hey, Tim. Yes. It's, it's, it's such a pleasure, brother. Yes. Thank, and listen, I can't thank you guys. I can't thank you, gentlemen. I can't. I mean, I feel 
so cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have you Thank on the show. I'm glad Absolutely. you're here. Absolutely. We mentioned before we came on, you're one of the last, you know, original founding guys that were actually singing on the record and to represent yes. this era of music. We really appreciate you. This is an honor to have you on the show here with us today. Thank you, Brother Tim. Thank and you. thank you, Kevin and Tom and Clyde. Let's Kyle, see. yes. I have to write it down. Call me. I have to write everything down. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Well, we thank you, man. Let's give a round of applause to Jimmy Merchant, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we thank you, man. man. We appreciate you taking the time out, and thank you to the family. And to your publishing company, publisher and everybody to help put this uh, interview together for us today. And, and like I said, it's an honor to have you, man. We're glad to have you. We're going to, you know, continue to t- play your music on the radio show Thank and you. and get this out on the television and get the news out Thank about you. the story. And you were in your story is just so inspirational to um, for many of the recording artists. I hope they're watching. The, well, look, those that are watching today and mm-hmm. those are listening to the show. Um, it's such an inspiration. So we thank you, Tommy. Yeah, I, you. I, I want to say is all the best of luck. God bless you, man. You've been Thank through it you. all, and you've had a wonderful story to tell. And you're still here to tell the story. Mm-hmm. That's that's a uh, God's blessing right there. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Jimmy. Woo! All right. Yes. Well, Jimmy, I want to thank you, Mr. Jimmy Merchant, the legend from Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. I also want to thank my co-host here, Mr. Kevin White. Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure having you on the show. And, of course, the... Radio legend, Mr. <laughs> Tommy McCarthy, All Philly right. Gold Radio in Philadelphia thank- and WOGLFM. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you, Tim. My man, great to be here. No, Thanks a lot. Thank and you. you too, Kevin. Oh, you too. <laughs> we yeah. appreciate you. Now, I'm Tim Marshall, and we want to thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase Live.